There are clearly many important issues facing the world today. <clears throat> and frankly, none may be more important and with more immediate relevance to us here in Calgary than the incredibly real and very close prospect of a nuclear Iran. In addition to the very obvious geopolitical implications, a serious conflict with Iran raises the specter of runaway oil prices with possible short-term effects here in Canada and the Alberta economy, and the more serious long-term negative effects on the already shaky global economy. Very few people on the planet are closer to this issue than our speaker. Professor Uzi Arad was the National Security Advisor to Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and head of Israel's National Security Council from 2009 to 2011. Join me in welcoming Dr. Uzi Arad. Good evening. And thank you very much, Mr. Wilson, for introducing me uh, here. And thank you, Jack, for inviting me and all the friends uh, who have brought me here for the first time to Calgary. Indeed, I chose this subject because I thought it is, and it will be, uh, the defining issue on the world's current uh, strategic agenda. But the question was, how should one address it uh, with you tonight? And I thought that of the different approaches one could take in looking at the issue, the one perhaps that would be most appropriate would be the informal <clears throat> uh, effort to try to understand what this is all about. So the first remark would be to notice that while the headlines have been full of references to the five plus one, to that team that has been meeting with the Iranians in Baghdad, next month they'll be meeting again in Moscow, who are they? Who are they who are confronting Ir Iran alone? Well, it is a coalition of the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. These are the five big ones, the ones who are permanently members of that executive body of the United Nations, the ones which has, which has the authority. And it consists of the United States, Russia, Great Britain, France, and China. So everybody uh, notices the fact that they are the five permanent members, to which Germany is added. But what f people fail to notice, that this group of five have been the original members of the nuclear club when the non-proliferation treaty was arrived at. Namely, they have been nuclear powers now for more than 50 years. Now, what does this mean? It means that on top of being powerful formally as being members of uh, the permanent members, they know their stuff when it comes to nuclear matters. So it's a very competent group that had been put together and is trying to negotiate with the Iranians something. There has been an application of pressures to stop the program. There has been an application of ever escalating sanctions, economic sanctions against Iran. There has been pressure by the passage of resolutions by the Security Council calling on Iran to stop all enrichment potential activities, including also the plutonium and not only the uranium, calling for complete cessation of all these presumably militarily relevant programs. And mind you, all these resolutions by the Security Council were led by very successful American diplomatic efforts all the grounds were laid and the pressure has been applied in an escalating way to try to slow, to delay, to stop the Iranian program. However, Iran is getting closer and closer to a point where it could construct a bomb. If all goes in a linear way, one could encounter a nuclear Iran in, say, a year and a half. And that's closer than ever before. 
So that means that all the efforts to stop Iran have been either too little or too late. And the question is, what are we to do now? The Iranian side is trying to gain time uh, for the perpetuation of its program. They would not like to do or to concede anything that has been demanded of them, but at the same time, they want to deflect the escalation of sanctions against them. So what is now being demanded by the West? What is being demanded is no less than a real implementation of everything that the United Nations had decided on, namely that Iran should suspend all enrichment, irrespective of the degree of enrichment, that existing stockpiles be taken out of the country so that they wouldn't be diverted for weapons uses, that a certain facility which is in COM, which is of special interest, would also be eliminated, and that on top of everything else, there would be a very intrusive inspection regime that would be there to observe that all is being done and that no further illicit activities are being conducted. There is no middle ground for compromise. There is no middle ground. It's an either or. It's either they will have nuclear weapons or the capacity to have them or they will not. It is only that alliance that could send the following message to Iran. First, comply with the United Nations resolution and do it. Stick by your word, enjoy the fruits of peaceful nuclear energy, but do not try to proceed with all these games seeking nuclear weapons. This will not be tolerated. Are we going to rise to the occasion? Uh, I hope so. But as an old intelligence man, I'm never sure. I hope so. I hope that this too will end well by the fact that this specter of a nuclear Iran would be sooner or later fully blunted and forever. Thank you.